Thank you, and uh, good evening. Afternoon. I'm on the wrong date. I'm on the wrong time of day as well. Um, flew in from uh, from uh, Sophia yesterday. Uh, I say fly because the taxi that was driving me because the airport closed. I feel like he's flying on and off the road, so I'm still a little disoriented. Anyway, um, I'm going to challenge some of your thinking today, maybe change, get you a little bit disoriented as well, and challenge some of the things that you're thinking about relative to marketing, and then I'm going to show you how it applies to my, uh, my other job, which is at the, at the business school at CEU. But uh, let me, let's start by getting on the same page of marketing. If you, uh, how many people have read Kotler? I think he's been here a couple of times, right? How many people read Kotler? Good. What's the, uh, what's the definition of marketing, please? We're going to test you on that. You, took a, you had to take a test. At some point in your life, you took a test on the definition of marketing. And it goes something like this. I don't remember. I'm a professor of marketing. I don't know, know it exactly, so I'd fail the test. It's, the, it's a societal process whereby goods and services are exchanged for like value or equivalent value of and so forth. Extremely complex, right? So let's, uh, let's figure out what a little more simple definition of marketing. Marketing about selling more stuff to more people for more money more often, more efficiently. My mentor, a guy named Serge Zeman, who's the chief marketing officer at Coke, drilled that in my head over and over again over about 20 years. And I don't care if you're talking about soft drinks, banks, mobile phones, B2B, that's what marketing should do. What marketing is not, it's not about building brand awareness just for the sake of it. I'll talk about that a little bit in a few minutes about the new rules and the old rules. It's not about logos, graphics, or sponsorships. It's not about award-winning advertising. And make, make sure I'm clear on this. I have absolutely no problem with an advertising agency I'm working with going out and entering award shows and winning awards. That's the game. That, if you want to get good creative guys working on your business, that's the way the advertising business is. They win awards. They move up in pay scale. They get better jobs. That's the way they get evaluated, and that's how they get prestige, and that's how they get reward. Fine. I just want to make sure they're on strategy. The end game is not the advertising award. And if you're a client, make sure you understand that. Don't worry about the awards. That's what your agency does. But understand it's important to them. But it's really not important to how you run your business. It's not about a bro uh, promotions, brochures, trade shows. This is all doing stuff. It's not even about getting customers to love your brand. It's really, if you think about marketing, and we get, use words so often, we never take a step back and look at them, especially when the word is in another language, like English. Uh, you think about marketing, you get, you get it, you, right away people say, well, we're talking about communication. Uh, we're talking about marketing, and, and nobody ever stops and thinks about what it means. It literally means go to market. So how do you go to market? The best marketer I ever saw was a guy who's used to sell hot dogs in front of our headquarters at Coke in Vienna. He was a guy who went to market every day when he loaded his product on his little cart and thought about, does it, it's cold, I've got to put more hot drinks on. It's warm, I've got to put more cold drinks on. I'm going by the office there, I've got to put some more salads in. i got to use some lighter dressings. Oh, I'm going by the factory, more sausages. He went to market every day. If he put a new cart out or put brochures on telephone posts in the area, he knew if that paid out for him in more sales. Did he sell more stuff to more people? He's a guy who went to market every day. But sometimes when we become brand managers, marketing managers, we get so caught up in doing stuff like I showed you on the, first, the previous page that we lose sight of why it is we're doing it. We're doing it to sell more stuff to more people more often, more efficiently. It's about customer value. It's a promise that you have to make and deliver. It's continuous, good times and bad. If you have a recession going on, you don't cut your marketing budget, I'd pour it on more because the other guys putting his head in the sand and running for cover because he doesn't really understand go to market. And that's the time for you to grab market share. It's about changing the dialogue. Now, changing the dialogue, I say about internal versus external focus. Most businesses are so complex in what they're doing and doing their day-to-day -day work, their organization, et cetera, they often lose track of what it is they're doing. If you're Tesco, for example, the best retailer in the world, arguably, right? But what, are, what is Tesco? Tesco tries to say they're customer value driven. They're customer oriented. But at the same time, they've got this gigantic logistic systems to manage. So if you're the managing director for Tesco and the phone rings, it's usually a logistic problem. So that's what they tend to focus on, an internal issue. So that happens to the company overall, overall organization of the company. It's easy to get lost in the stuff you're doing instead of why it is that you're doing it. 
but marketers also get lost. Now, I'm going to do a little test for you and see how smart you are versus the Hungarian Tourism Council, who I just love to pick on, because they have absolutely the worst marketing in, in the state of, pretty much in marketing as a whole, but definitely in the tourism category. But let's just say, you guys don't know much about tourism marketing. How many people are experts on Hungarian tourism? Good. Let's see how smart you are. Who do you think is the number one market for Hungarian tourism? Who's most likely to go to Hungary for tourist vacations? Austrians? Romanians? Who are they? Germans. It's the 800-pound gorilla, right? It's not Austrians. They're the little brother of the Germans, right? So you got, what, how many, how many Germans are there now? There's about 80 million of them? It's a lot. It's a pretty big gorilla. So, and they got a lot of money, and they're close by. So it's no question that Germans represent the single biggest market for Hungarian tourism. You guys all know that, right? Pretty obvious. Now, let's go one step further. Who, which demographic group of Germans spend the most money on advertising, or, I'm sorry, on tourism? You guys are really smart. You should go to work for Hungarian tourism. So we're talking about, let's say, 45 to 65, right? Families, husband, wife, maybe the kids, right? Who makes the decision in a 45 to 65 year old German household? What does Frau Schmidt think about that ad? She's saying we're going to go anywhere this summer except to Germany because I don't need my husband. We're going to go try to reconnect because we're working so hard and doing stuff. Instead of going to reconnect over a nice cup of coffee and looking at the chain bridge and the castle, he's going to be looking at these girls all day long. It's not only not effective marketing, it's actually anti-marketing because it's screwing up their chances to get Frau Schmidt to come to their market. It's actually telling her not to come. But what they think about, they sit around the room going, what do we have? We have beautiful girls in Hungary. We also have paprika. We got spas. How do we put all those together? They actually did an ad, and I tell people this, and they always go, nobody's that stupid. They actually did an ad with, a, I don't think it was this girl, but another girl that was similarly pretty. There's a lot of pretty girls in Hungary, evidently. And they put two paprika mustaches on her. <laughs> and they advertised that in Poland. I had no, I just, that's one of those ads you look at 400 times, and you have no idea what the hell it says. If, if you go to Budapest tomorrow, or fly back with me later today, you'll go through the, as you go into customs, you'll look and you'll see three ads called a talent for entertaining. And you go, well, that's a pretty nice, I want to go to a country that has a talent for entertaining. And they tell you who, why that is. They have, they show cases of that. And the new ad I just saw last week when I came through was, they have the president of the Academy of Sciences. I'm in education. I don't really want to have a dinner with this guy. Um, I just don't think it's going to be that exciting. Then they also have the number one under 16-year-old closed water sailing champion of the world is a Hungarian. And you should come to Hungary because they have a talent for entertaining because they have that guy. What the hell does that have to do with entertaining? What does it have to do with you? What does it have to do with Germans? What does it have to do with Frau Schmidt? Nothing. But they're so focused on what they have, they're not thinking what the customer wants. So when you go to use your computer and it got 14,000 functions you can't figure out, they're thinking about what they can do instead of what they can do for you. And that's very important. We lose ourselves in that trap all the time. At Procter & Gamble, we get so focused on, when I started my career at Procter & Gamble, we got so focused on surfactant systems. You don't even know what a surfactant system is probably. It's the different cleaning agents that make it whiter or get out grease. We get so focused on that and such great R&D that we think you care about it. All you want to know is that you're, if you're a wife, that your husband's happy, his clothes smell good, and his kids, you don't have stains on their clothes. How do you make it into their lives? You've got to think about what you do for people instead of what you do for yourself.